everybody. So good to see you. I got my sidekick here with me, my partner in crime. And we're going to have a great time tonight on our Wednesday night vlog. We're going to be talking about the fruit of the Spirit, and we're going to be making some blackberry cobbler. Stay tuned. So, hey, welcome everybody back to the old homestead over here, Roma Hills. Uh, I've got my Piggy Wiggly back on, and I'm representing Coca-Cola tonight. Kent Mahan, son, that's for you. So there you go. There's a shout out to my good buddy Kent. Mm -hmm. So tonight I told you we're going to be making some blackberry cobbler. Now, it's going to be a little different in that it's late April, and blackberries will not be here until what june so we got a slight you know variant but that's okay it's still going to turn out really really good yeah again we go back to flour but what we want to do is about three quarters of a cup so three quarters of a cup now i've got a cup here and all i'm going to do is pretend that it's a three quarter cup <laughs> so i'm going to fill it three quarters of the way full i'm going to throw that in there just like that so flour, three quarters of a cup. Boom. Very, very simple. White lily. It's white lily. White lily. It's gotta be white lily, baby. You know the deal. Now, next thing is a cup of sugar. So we got just a few ingredients here. So I want to get a cup of sugar. I'm gonna throw that right in there too. That's my grandma's bowl, by the way. I was a little shy on that, so let me just throw a little bit extra in there. Because, you know, hey, sugar's good. All right? So we got three quarters cup of flour, a cup of sugar. Now what we need here is about a half a stick of butter. Now, we use Irish butter. And you can see right here where it says uh, made with milk from grass-fed cows. Now look, I'm going to take this butter. And I'm going to stick it right in this little saucepan. I'm gonna turn this saucepan on and I'm gonna let that butter melt because I'm gonna to have to stir it in my dry ingredients. Now, here's another good thing that you're gonna to have to have. Milk, good old milk. I'm gonna steal this out of here because I need something to measure a cup of milk by. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and whisk those dry ingredients together so they're fully blended. And yeah, that's a lot of powder coming off over there. Just inhale that. Just inhale it. Right, Chris? Get you some of that. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, my Lord, that's wonderful. This is the only difference. Okay, this is the only difference. That it's not June yet. But this is the fruit. And so, it's basically already made for you. It's just fruit filling. So it's very, very simple. So I'm gonna open that while our butter is melting, okay? How do you like my can opener? I mean, listen, this thing is jammed up. You know, we've been married for about 20 years. You'd think by now we could get an electric can opener? No, we like going things old school, baby. Yeah, because this, this, these, these hand crank jobs, they last for about, around here, about two weeks. So, listen, let me say this about the food that we create here. It's fattening. It's full of sugar. It's full of salt. All of the stuff that the doctors tell you that if you put that in your mouth, you're going to die, that's what we primarily eat around here. <laughs> so, <laughs> but hey, it's good. And when you're quarantined, forgive me if I don't eat cauliflower. Now watch this here. While this is going on, I'm going to preheat this oven to 375. Go, boy, go. Watch this. This is when the goodness begins to happen. Oh yeah, baby. Now, one more ingredient. I'm gonna throw this here in the stove. So, organic whole milk. 
Check this out. I'm gonna pour it over here. One cup. One cup. Pour that in there. I mean, it's four ingredients. I need that just to be a little bit thicker than that. A little bit thicker. This is so important. Kristen, can you do me a favor and get some cooking oil? Sure. I think it should be in the pantry. I learned a long time ago. Now listen, I'm not a famous chef, although I do play one on TV. But I, <laughs> I'm not a famous chef, but I'll tell you this. Every time I turn around, I'm getting these instructions on how to cook stuff and it says, uh, put these cookies or put whatever it is in an ungreased cookie sheet. Listen, the devil is a liar. <laughs> Okay, so always, 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 always put some sort of coating in your pan. Now look, this is a cast iron skillet. Remember, you gotta get your hands in there. I want that greased. So watch this right here. I'm gonna pour that right in there. You see that? Can you get a shot of that? Look at that. See that? So all I'm gonna do is pour that right in there just like that. Now look here. Take this fruit. Oh my God, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Watch this. Bingo. Now I didn't use that whole can because it won't fit. But I got a lot of it in there, okay? I can throw that in the middle there if I want to. There's no rhyme or reason to none of it. I'll stick that on there just like that. Bingo. And then what I do is as soon as the oven is preheated to 375, I'm going to stick this in the middle of the oven and I'm going to cook it for an hour on 375. And then, hey, we're going to have us some good time. So listen, while we're waiting on the oven to finish preheating, uh, Chris and I are going to sit down and bring you some of the word, so stay tuned. Well, again, welcome everybody. So glad you're here. Thanks for tuning in. I'm joined by my sidekick today, Miss Kristen. Hey y'all, it's so good to come and be able to speak to you today. And um, so I asked her to come along because most of the time she doesn't get a chance to sit in on these vlogs. So welcome, babe. Thanks, thanks for having me. Oh, listen, you're always welcome around <laughs> here. So, um, we're, uh, we're sitting here at the kitchen table of the homestead, and uh, we're looking out. There's, they brought three more cows today, and we got some sheep out, and um, we got chickens are coming, and we got a tractor coming. I mean, listen, we're going, you know, full swing into this thing. So, I'm fired up about it. And we're grateful that y'all are tuning in today. So, we're, as we're waiting on the... Um, I'm looking over at the stove as we're waiting on the the blackberry cobbler to cook. Um, everybody knows that blackberries are a fruit, so we thought we'd take some time here and talk about the fruit of the Spirit. Now, now the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, starting off in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control so there's no way in a vlog uh, that we'll be able to talk about all of the fruit that are a part of the spirit but um, we thought that we'd take one each and share with y'all what they mean to us what that particular fruit means to us so um, I'm going to be talking about self-control um, even though, as my wife pointed out, that <laughs> I use no self-control when it comes to eating. Um, but I will be talking about self-control. And um, Miss Kristen's going to be talking about joy, correct? Joy. So take about two minutes and share 
with everybody what, uh, or three, or however much you want, um, what joy means to you, babe. And I'm going to give you the first go because, well, ladies first. Well, so, thank you. Go for it. So when John asked me to speak on a fruit of the Spirit, immediately joy just popped up to my mind. Um, and I think it's just because of the state that we're in. We're in a pandemic, and, and then I'm going to talk to you about joy. But it's easy for me to find joy, and I think it's because of some of the trials I've been through in my life. And I know that, you know, it doesn't matter if this world crumbles down on top of us and America falls and we continue in this. I know that the Lord has me. And I know that the Lord has our family, and I know that the Lord has Fam Church and everyone that is here watching and listening to us. And it's the joy of the Lord that sustains me and sustains our family and sustains Christians in a time of a pandemic or a time of turmoil or trials. And so I just want to talk to you about joy, and I'm going to read a scripture and then talk a little bit about it. Um, so part of my phone, and it just flipped over on me. It says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, and that's in Romans, I think it's 11, no, 15, 13, Romans 15, 13. And so again, it says, may the God of hope, and we have hope in our, in our God that He is going to take care of us. And, and it's through that hope, and that He's going to fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in Him. And those are the two key pieces of how can we find joy? How are we different than this world? How can we still laugh and, and not worry about all of the stuff that we hear on the news? Um, it's because that we have a God of hope. We have eternal hope in our God. We know the end of the story. We know that if we die, that is just to our gain. And so we have... Um, the hope that God gives us and we trust in him and we believe in him and his word and the assurances that we have and that gives us joy um, and that's how our joy um, just dwells on the inside of us despite anything that we're going through yep and I actually remember this lady that um, in our first church in, in Ocracoke her name was Betsy and she used to play the piano and she would sing this song the joy of the Lord is my strength yep and I can't sing so I'm not but you do the Yeah, tune. the joy of the Lord is my, my strength. strength. And then she'd get to a place in the song where she would start playing it and she'd laugh. Ha 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 She wouldn't. So, you know, when you see someone laughing like that playing the piano, you can't help but join in. Right. Unless you got a heart of stone. And I can't forget that at all. Her, just the way she would play the piano and how much joy she had in her heart. I'll never forget that. The way she looked as she, as she played that. And it just resonated so much with me that the joy of the Lord is our strength and that is what is different between us and unbelievers is that the joy that we have that 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 the Lord gives us is the strength to face anything it doesn't matter like I said if the world shakes we're going to be fine the Lord is going to take care of us just like he takes care of the sparrows and um, so that's what I wanted to say to you guys today I'm so glad I got to speak to, to you guys I love you guys um, and so thanks for letting me talk about joy. Oh, are you kidding me, baby? You are welcome here anytime. <laughs> um, mine is self-control. And um, there are certain areas in my life that I've got self-control in. I mean, there's no one on this earth that knows me better than you. Right? Right. So you know the areas where I have self-control, and you know the areas where I don't have self-control. And there are areas in my life that as we've been together for 21 years, I've grown in the areas of self-control and then there's other areas where I don't want to grow in the areas of self-control like for example eating you know what I mean if the Bible says some people's sins are hidden and other people's sins are well known mine's well known okay because I eat and that's you know so there are certain areas in my life I've always been transparent there's certain areas in my life that I have it going on then there's other areas in my life where I've just I struggle so when you talk about having self-control, self-control means in all areas of your life. And so I don't have all areas of my life in self-control. I never will. You know what I mean? The only time I will be in full control of myself is when I'm dead. You understand what I'm saying? So there's going to be times, and that doesn't mean, there's seasons where I'll go on a diet and I'll crush it. You know that to be yeah, the case. You can drop some weight. Like I can crush it. Quick. 
But then there's other areas and other times where I just, I'm just simply don't have the energy to devote to trying to think about health, eat right, do right, all those kinds of things. And it's the same way with other people. There are people who I'm watching, um, you know, Facebook, for example. There are times where I'll see something on Facebook and I'm like, oh my God, no, they didn't. You know what I mean? They shouldn't have said that. They should have practiced some self-control in those areas, right? But then you have to be gracious and see and understand, okay, I don't know what happened to them the night before. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's driving that. You know, I wouldn't have wrote that. I wouldn't have responded that way, but they are. And there was just a momentary lapse in their self-control. And unfortunately on Facebook, when you have that, it's there for everybody to see. So self-control is one of those things that I have found that if you try to do it in your own strength, you fail miserably, right? Mm -hmm. What I have found is if my, if, if, if my self-control is infused with the power of the Spirit, then I have self-control. But if it's just me going, I will not do this, I will not do that, and I'm trying to beat my flesh into submission, I rarely win. But when I give up, and just say, God, I just, I, say, I can't do it. I, I don't have the strength to do it. I just don't have it today. I have found that when I just give up, God comes to the rescue. He infuses my self-control with the power of the Holy Spirit. And it happens. And I'm like, whew. But for some reason, you know, I learned that lesson that I unlearned it. <laughs> I learned that lesson and I unlearned it. And it's just life. You know, it's just life. So the fruit of the Spirit is a wonderful thing. What I heard from, from what you said and then what I said is that the Holy Spirit infuses you for self-control and the Holy Spirit infuses me for joy. And that's really the key piece to all of this is that it's a fruit of the Spirit. And when we dwell within the Spirit and we spend time with the Holy Spirit and with, and with the Lord and, and with Scripture and worship, that's how we build our body um, up is through his strength and through what no doubt says. about it so it's just like a tree or something you know we just painted fruit, fruit trees here at the homestead right mm -hmm. before we even left the nursery with them the guy goes hey those need to be pruned right before we even brought them over here so he started cutting them off okay then the guy tells me for the next three to five years when you see that fruit tree beginning to bloom and you see all the blooms I want you to go out there and I want you to rip off the blooms off the fruit tree I'm like rip all the blooms off the fruit tree man that's the fruit that's gonna be the fruit and he's like no you don't understand you gotta for the first three to five years we do not want the tree focusing on the fruit we want the tree focusing on getting healthy yeah. and being and being strong and if we can get the tree to focus on developing itself its its root system the trunk the branches, if we can get those strong for the first three to five years, we're not worrying about the fruit, worrying about the main part of the tree, then the fruit comes after that. Then we know we got a good, strong, healthy tree, and a good, strong, healthy tree is going to develop fruit. So we can't get any fruit of those fruit trees that we plant out there for three to five years. But if we're diligent, we do what we're supposed to do, then in three to five years, We'll have something. The last thing I want is a shallow roots. I don't That's want to be it. a shallow person, right? Right. I want some deep rooted, grounded, deep in there. So I like it. Can't blow blow over with an easy wind. I like it. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Oh, listen, you're always welcome here. And uh, you keep on. I'm not going to kiss <laughs> you. I'll kiss you right on the lips. Aww. I will right on the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know the deal. All right. And you know the deal too. <laughs> Hope that was a blessing to you. <laughs> hey, if you can't have a good time, I ain't having it. So, hey, love y'all in the Lord. Have a great time. And, we miss uh, you. We I miss, miss y'all. I love you guys. We'll just keep doing what we're doing and we'll get through it and we'll get back together real soon. All right.
So here we are, an hour in at 375 for this cobbler, and it's time to see what this thing looks like. So, Kristen, we're going to open this up a little bit. Woo, it's hot coming out of there, son. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we have got. Put that in there. Let's see. The unveiling. Smells good. Oh, mm. son, what are you talking about? Baby! Good times have come our way. I knew that was coming. One more, babe. You want to know what kind of ice cream? You, you better come yeah, down I because will. it's going to come sliding out of there. You got it, babe? Well, it's, it's ice cream. It's ice cream. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there you go. Here, let me fight me on it. All right, that's enough. Actually, that ain't fit to eat kids. I wouldn't eat none of this. Kristen, this is no good. Y'all go on to bed. This is crazy. I'm, I'm sorely disappointed <laughs> in that I wouldn't feed that to the dog outside. That's just awful. So y'all go on to bed. And, um, yeah, if it's nasty, why are you still eating it? If it's nasty, why are you still eating it? Yeah. Because I don't want y'all to have none. <laughs> I, have, I have fed my family. I have fed my family yet again. Best. Thankfully, I'm indispensable around here. I mean, if I'm not around here, this crowd around here, they're going to starve to death. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Actually, Mom can make stuff, too. <laughs>